How there everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today we are going to be analyzing the company Heineken which was actually recommended by HB. Now he pretty much just said can you do Heineken or tap both seem kind of cheap maybe interesting for you. So we're going to take a look at this using the discounted free cash flow calculator and seeing their fundamentals and trying to come up with a target share price based off of these metrics. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Starting off, we got the dividend summary. Heineken actually does pay a dividend around 2.3%, which ends up being 55 cents a share for an annual payout of $1.09. Now, the payout ratio, guys, is actually blank. I don't necessarily know why this is. However, notice this big red flag, which is the five-year growth rate at negative 5.66. So... The fact that this is negative is pretty much telling me that they have not grown this dividend. Actually, looking at their dividend history on the five year, you can tell that they pretty much pay it semi annually, and one time out of the year is significantly higher than the next. However, they did have a couple off years here in 2020, which makes sense because of the whole pandemic thing. And then in 2021, they actually cut it back down to 42 cents for the, ha for the first half of the year, and then 16 cents for the second half of the year. So seeing that in 2020, they only paid it one time, pretty much is telling me that we're probably going to see something regarding this and COVID when it comes to their fundamentals. Therefore, when you see this growth rate at negative 5.66%, you got to take a look at the bigger picture. Seeing that in 2020, they actually only paid only half of the year. And then in 2021, they did pay both times of the year. However, it was significantly lower. They have grown this dividend for one consecutive year, as we just saw. X dividend date is about to be on the 425. Payout date is on May 10th, and they pay their dividends semi-annually. So now coming over here to the calculator, we got the ticker symbol H-E-I-N-Y market cap of $56.4 billion, PE of 15.07. So it's pretty low as it stands. So telling me that based on their earnings, this current share price of $48.23 might be something decent, right? Might be a good buy. However, we're going to take a look at the fundamentals and come up with an even more accurate representation of what this company's value should be. Now, based on their annual dividend of $1.09, they pay out $627 million every single year in regards to this dividend. And after this dividend is paid, guys, looking at it from the five-year average free cash flow, they're still left with around $2.1 billion. This only comes out to be a payout ratio in regards to the free cash flow of 23.32%, meaning that they can 100% afford this dividend and increase it into the future. Now let's come over here to the fundamentals. Net income, five years ago of $2.3 billion to one year ago of $3.8 billion. Increase of 63%. Big outlier here, guys, is two years ago. And as I said with the dividend summary, they did have an off year in 2020 because of the whole COVID thing. And if we actually take a look at when this cash flow was taken, it was taken as of December 2020, meaning that it got the whole entire year of COVID, which kind of makes sense as to why they did negative $249 million. So guys, for all intents and purposes, I'm pretty much just going to ignore this number because it's a COVID number, right? And as you guys can see, people after the pandemic somewhat suitably ended, I guess you could say, uh, they just skyrocketed going from three years ago around $2.5 billion to a massive $3.8 billion. So, you know, people were pretty thirsty, uh, I guess, in regards to beer. People really wanted to drink uh, after this whole being locked down and all, and all that stuff. So can they continue this into the future? Probably, I don't necessarily know. However, the fact that they did a negative $249 million two years ago in 2020, I'm going to take it as a COVID number and I'm just going to ignore it for, for all intents and purposes. Next, we got the free cash flow. Cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. The lifeblood of the company. Five years ago of $2.6 billion to one year ago of $3.3 billion. Increase around 24%. Average five-year free cash flow of $2.7 billion. Actually, this looks significantly better than the net income. At least over here is all positive, right? Two years ago, they did go down slightly. However, they definitely rebounded back one year ago after the pandemic and just restrictions started to settle down. Next, we got the revenue. Five years ago of $26 billion to one year ago, guys, of only 
24.9 billion dollars this is a decrease of around 3.68% which is actually fairly surprising. Now, I understand as to why from three years ago to two years ago, they did go down. However, they did go up slightly one year ago, but it was not enough to actually supersede that of three years ago or even five years ago, right? So it was pretty close. Uh, off by around a billion dollars or so but nonetheless it is still a decrease will this pattern continue into the future that i'm not necessarily certain it really does all depend i'm not really entrenched i guess you could say when it comes to uh beer and brewery companies but definitely something to take a look at read up their aks and pretty much just look at their business model and see how they operate because there, this is the kind of industry that unless you do research on exactly like how it works, I personally have no expertise on this. Now guys, coming over here to the total assets minus the total liabilities. This metric pretty much simulates if the company were to liquidate all of their assets, would they be able to A, cover their debts, number one, and number two, how much money would they have left after doing so? Now, this is actually, well, kind of disappointing, not even going to lie. Pretty much throughout the entire five years... The entirety of five years, including today, they have been in the red. Currently, guys, they are in the red by around $2.9 billion, which is not good in the slightest. Meaning that they cannot liquidate their assets and cover all their debts. And maybe you would say, well, it was only one off year. But the problem is that they have been like this for every single year within the past five years. And those are the only years I have access to. I'm pretty sure if you were to look further back in time, you would see a similar pattern seeing that this is the same pattern that we've been seeing with the past five years. This is not good. They cannot cover their debts. If the economy were to really go haywire, were to really go on a down, on a down spiral, then a company like this would not be able to actually cover their debts and might actually go bankrupt. Average assets is around $10.4 billion. Average liability is around $13.2 billion. And average assets minus the average liabilities, it is around negative $2.7 billion. Now let's come over here to the silent killer when it comes to investing. Shares outstanding. You want this number to be going down, not up. Because the more that this number goes up, you as the investor gets less ownership of the company. The more this number goes down, the more ownership you get of this company. Now, this company, Henneken, is actually, well, it's increasing it, but not by much. Five years ago of 570 million shares to today of 575.6 million shares. That is an increase around a little less than 1% at 0.95%. Now, this to me, this kind of increase isn't necessarily that, I guess, worrying because it's nothing too major. I mean, it, for all intents and purposes, yes, it is an increase for this calculator, right? You would normally see this as, as a negative. However, less than 1%, I don't consider this like a really, really bad thing. Yes, they are diluting you, but not that much. And if you even look at the previous to the current tier, they did buy back a little bit at around 0.02%. And lastly, guys, with the cash equivalent, and as of today, they have around $3.7 billion in cash equivalents and an average cash around $3.4 billion. Now, guys, we need to make some assumptions. Low, medium, high, the same as usual, three different factors. Revenue growth, projected share buyback, and the required rate of return. For the required rate of return, keep it the same across the board at 10%. Revenue growth, I'm going to take it from Seeking Alpha's revenue growth year over year and the revenue growth forward. And the projected share buyback, I'm going to take it based off of the shares outstanding that you guys just saw. Now, before we do anything, I just have to point out something very, very, well, off about what's happening right now with this calculator. And that the target shares after debt. So we take the target share price based off of the revenue, the income, and the cash flow. And as you can see right here, we got target share price in the positive. However, when it comes to the target share price as after debt, that they're pretty much in the negative. And the reason for this is because the way that the calculator works, it takes the free cash flow and it divides it by the net income. And unfortunately, two years ago during COVID, they had a free cash flow to equity divided by net income of negative 801%. This number is skewing all of the other numbers. And seeing that it is a COVID number for this purpose i am going to ignore it and essentially just put zero percent essentially like it never happened across all three assumptions and now guys in doing so the calculator somewhat gets fixed so for the low assumption i'm going to assume a revenue growth of five percent 
projected share buyback of zero. This comes out to be a target share price of around forty-six dollars and thirty-nine cents. For the meeting assumption, I'm going to assume a growth of seven percent, projected share buyback of around half of a percent. This comes out to be forty-nine dollars and ninety-four cents. And for my highest assumption, I'm going to say a revenue growth of nine percent, projected share buyback of one percent. This comes out to be fifty-three dollars and sixty-nine cents. Now adjusting for debt, this number is based off of the net income and the net debt that they have. If the net debt is bigger than the cash that they have on hand, then this number would come down. If they have more cash on hand than debt, then this number comes up. So you can see this number comes significantly down, meaning that they have a lot more debts than they do cash on hand, which I mean, we just saw based off of that assets minus liabilities, right? So for the low assumption, it is $19.45. For the median assumption, it is $22.86. And for my highest assumption, we would like to buy that $26.48. Now, me personally, guys, I like to buy companies with a margin of safety. If let's say you're building a bridge and you know that the max capacity has to be around 10,000 pounds, you need to build that bridge for 15 or 20,000 pounds just to account for any mishaps that may happen. Same principles apply when it comes to investing. And this is essentially what the margin of safety is. For the low assumption, with a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 50%, we would like to buy between around $16.53 all the way up to $18.48. For my mini assumption, we would like to buy between $19.43 all the way up to $21.72. And for my highest assumption, we would like to buy between $22.51 to $25.16. Now, guys, the current share price is $48.23. So, Again, this is really where you must come in now. Which price do you believe? And even, do you believe my assumptions, right? Because as it stands, if you were to just take the target share prices adjusting for debt, then this is a no buy. However, this is very, very close to the media assumption and even the low assumption as well for the target share prices not adjusting for debt. So this is where I usually say, hey, these are just my assumptions, guys. All these, all these revenue growth, the projected share buyback, I am making these numbers up based off of what I think this company will grow into the future. And even the required for the return, I want 10% to match the S&P 500. If you do not agree with my assumptions, which I hope that you don't, I have this calculator available for free. In fact, I have an entire playlist of discounted free cash flow calculator videos that I think all of them should have the link to get this calculator. So you want it it's for free all i ask for in return guys is like subscribe comment really does help her with the algorithm we are really really close to 500 subs would love to reach it by the end of march and if we can't then we can't but i really would like to get that community tab as soon as possible so that way i can start communicating with you guys creating polls and when earnings come out which company do you guys want to see etc 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 so if you guys want to help me i'm giving out this calculator for free all i'm asking is for, for something free in return now let's actually take a look at a new thing that I started doing a couple episodes ago and that is dividends at current price. I wanted to see if you were to invest X amount of money into this company, how much would you be getting in dividends at an annual basis, quarterly basis and monthly basis based on the current dividend yield. So I took the average US income $68,703 and brought it back down to the monthly which is $5,725. Since the annual dividends per share is a dollar and nine cents, let's say that you put in one month's paycheck into this company. This will buy you around 118.71 shares. This comes out to be, guys, an annual dividend for Heineken at $129.39, quarterly dividends of $32.35, and a monthly dividend at $10.78. So it's not really a lot. And also seeing that this company does pay out semi-annually, it's not really a lot. You're not going to get a lot of paychecks, I guess you could say, uh, from this company. And honestly, at $1.09 for a $32 quarterly dividend, it's not really that impressive for me. There are better companies that you would get much better yield because they pay significantly more. So that is just where that stands. All in all, when it comes to Heineken, I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm not really certain for their business and I'm not even that much of an alcohol drinker. Actually, I don't drink any alcohol in the slightest. So I'm not fairly certain how the company structure works, right? Therefore, because I don't understand it, I'm not going to invest in it. And, you know, they do have a lot of positives, I guess you could say. You know, they have the positive net income, except for that one year. Uh, positive cash flow. And, unfortunately, the revenue is decreasing. Something that's really, really concerning, though, is the fact that they cannot cover their liabilities with their assets. And that's huge. But something else is positive is that in regards to this dividend, they can afford it. So I don't necessarily know what's happening over here, right? This really is depending on how you feel about it. Maybe if you want to invest in it, read up on their 8K, read up on their 10K, and you should make your own decision yourself. But that pretty much does it for this episode. 
I liked if you like, comment, subscribe, as I said before. If you would like to follow me on my new tech sites of Bitchu, Odyssey, and Rumble, all links in the description below. I also have a Let's Play channel, so if you want to follow me on there, please, the link is also in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis video, which will probably be TAP.